All right, welcome back to another episode of Shogun Review, Ladies of the Willow World, Episode 6. Was this episode good? Yes. Yes, it was. There has not been one disappointing episode of Shogun. Now, this episode was a little slower because we had a lot of things building up and a lot of intricate details that were being talked about, a lot of settings that required a slower kind of momentum but it was still very good everything is well written everything makes sense and everything is part of an overall bigger uh plan a bigger direction the show is going so yes it is still a very very good episode there is nothing negative that i can actually call out about this episode so i'm still giving it a 10 even though we didn't reach any crazy action moments or anything like that we are building up to a lot that's about to happen and i'm very very excited for it so yes it's still very good i'm still giving this a 10 acting fantastic there were some new uh kimonos and Ayoris in this that i thought were beautiful for both the men and the women uh, there were some really good looking ones there. Uh, the sets are always top notch. I, I keep talking with my wife that the production value of the show is just awesome. It is so good and better than most shows. It, better than a lot of movies even. I mean, it's just really good and the CGI isn't anything when it when it's used isn't anything that's too obnoxious or too over the top. So it's all very good and I have no negatives about this episode at all so it is a 10 out of 10 now i'm not going to go into spoilers in this section that is going to be the next section but anjin is still my favorite character of the show i mean he's kind of the main character right but i still really appreciate his character everything he does i appreciate his mannerisms how he says things and how he speaks but we're starting to see him kind of adapt to the culture more and more and understand it a little bit more and more as well and so it's really nice to see his character growth as a constant continual thing in every episode more and I, I really appreciate it that being said i'm gonna go ahead and head into the spoiler section so we can talk about the episode a little bit so if you haven't seen it this is your time to bow out of the video okay welcome to the spoiler section samurai so episode six ladies of the willow world interesting title very cool and we obviously got a lot that happened in this episode as usual although this episode didn't feel as long as some of the other ones and when i say long i don't mean too long where you're bored it just didn't feel like we got as much but that's not necessarily a negative because it was a slower episode there was no real confrontation going on i mean we got to see in osaka that there was some stuff happening um but overall no real combat uh the one older samurai guy uh loyal to toronaga we got to see him on his way out he did a couple slashes but it was more of an escape real quick than it was anything else so i'm not really chalking that up to a combat scene um it was overall just a slower episode we got a lot more development we got to see um more things happening in osaka some of the internal fighting going on we got to see one of the regents get killed right he well we didn't get to see him get killed but we know he died we've got to see him dead uh so there's lots of more drama uh, coming from every angle we had uh tornaga pretty much directly confronting mariko about her possible relationship with anjin right and that was interesting and i think he set them up at the the brothel to spy and see if there was something between them and i'm wondering on the back end if maybe he wants there to be something between them so that anjin has a reason another reason a real tangible japanese reason to stay in japan to stay with Toronaga, uh, Toronaga on his side of things so that they have that intelligent naval strategy guy you know what i mean because he knows how to use the cannons flawlessly he's got strategies that are from the western world that are not from japan and so it would be good for him if he can keep anjin around for many different reasons plus i think he likes him too i mean he, he's starting to trust him more and more he saved his life several times now he's benefited him more than several times now and so i think it would behoove him in every respect to try to keep him around and i think he's trying to play that and make that happen oh boy so we got so much with the osaka and oh man crazy girl she is oh, she's she's a threat that that girl uh what's her name ochiba or, or whatnot she is she's a problem 
and she's gonna have to be dealt with. She's conniving, she's scheming, she's she's trouble, and she's got she's got the regents pretty much wrapped around her finger, and she's playing um, she's playing them for everything she can. She's she's got an agenda, she's got issues. We got to see some backstory for her, but also for Mariko, we got a lot of backstory more uh, for her going into more detail and even some character growth with her where she kind of had a moment with Toronaga where he was basically like you know your dad wanted you to continue a mission so what the hell are you doing and she's like oh i'm stupid i guess i i shouldn't be wanting to die every day i should be trying to honor my father and and pick up kind of where he left off in in some sense right and i always thought Toronaga was probably involved in the incident with Mariko's father but now we're getting little hints that he was kind of the strategist behind the whole thing and so that's interesting and um I want to see I want to see more I want to know more about what's going on there and we had the interesting brothel scene right where I, I thought it was cool that the Kiku chick she's so insightful with people she she's very good with people and you get to see that not only was she I think trying to draw some information out of them, but also I think she felt um, in some way as a woman, I guess, sorry or empathetic to Mariko uh, with her possible relationship with Anjin, right? And I thought it was interesting how, you know, about halfway through she got up and she went and sat kind of diagonal behind Mariko saying those personal words for Mariko to have to translate but for Anjin to look and respond, he had to see Mariko. And Mariko was saying those words in the first person like it was her saying it. And you could see the emotion between the two of them. And then, you know, they had that little hand touch there at the end where Anjin kind of touched her hands. Um, but it was a very cool scene, a very nice scene. And uh, it was interesting. And... and and uncomfortable in some aspects. I really appreciate the show in every way. I think the writers are great. The directors are great. Everybody does a great job in this show. And I know I, I say it every time. But the I, I'm in love with the, the designs for the kimonos and everything. They all look so good and so so legit. Even Ishido has some really nice one. There's a, like a black and silver one that he's wearing in one of the scenes. That I was like, oh my gosh, look how nice that looks. And so I, I really like it. And this this is another 10 for me. It really is. This whole show, this is a 10 out of 10. They'd have to butcher the last episodes, you know, to for me to really uh, reduce the score here at this point. Um, there hasn't been one episode that I thought was mediocre or even average. Every episode has been excellent, wonderful, and I can't wait for the next episode. Every ep At the end of every episode, I'm, I'm, I'm longing for more. Uh, and that's that's what you want from these shows. You want something that's going to grab you that you don't want to, after a week, the new episode comes out and you're like, well, I'll get to it when I get to it. You know, you want to be on the edge of your seat all week long waiting for it to come out so you can just dive right in. And that's what makes a good show when you have a show that makes you feel that way. And that's what this show is for me. I want more. I want it all. I want it now. And I don't want to wait. So I can't wait to see uh, what more we get. We've also got, um, oh, what's his name? The guy who's kind of like a traitor. He was going to, uh, with Ishido for a little while, but then Toronaga kind of caught him. And uh, Man, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, but his him and his stupid nephew, we got some more with them. They kind of lost some leverage, some power there with uh, John Blackthorne now being the uh, admiral for the cannons and everything, the general for the cannons. And so it's, it's interesting how everything's playing out. And we're going to get some... Um, real contention here coming up very very soon and I'm really looking forward to seeing how everything plays out all right guys that's gonna be it for this review again it's another 10 out of 10 if you agree or disagree put it down in the comments let me know what you guys think let me know who your favorite character is down below too um, I love John John Blackthorn the engine I, I think he's awesome he's I love the the things that he says and how he acts and how sometimes he's a little clumsy in the culture I, I think it's great um, I definitely like Toronaga and Mariko uh, very much as well. Both of them, all three of them are, are just top tier characters for me. So let me know who your characters are, which ones you like. Um, and drop a like and subscribe. Helps the channel, makes me happy, and that's all good. So thank you for hanging out, everyone. And I do look forward to seeing everyone in the next video. But until then, take care and sayonara.